Right guys, I just wanted to um, start uh, a few videos with this. Um, basically, you'll see this at the start of the next probably a few videos. Um, but if you hadn't seen some of the videos before, then this may have been the start of those. Um, but basically, all I wanted to say was this: over the next sort of few weeks, um, I basically won't really be making videos. I basically pre-recorded a load because I I just don't have time. I kind of had the decision of do I just not make videos for like three weeks or do I make videos just so then I'm at least posting videos you know videos that you may want to see um, I will say now they probably won't be like the greatest videos ever some of them I really really like the replace room um, like I, th I think there are pretty pretty good videos I'll try and make sure I have you know a few of them um, in there like some some really really good digging out of camps and stuff um, in clam wars however um, I've basically I sort of recorded all these videos uh, pretty much the day before I'm leaving like to move out and all that um, which means they're kind of a bit rushed um, you know because I've had sort of bigger priorities than making YouTube videos and although I really do enjoy making YouTube videos um, it's something that I don't, I don't want it to completely just be like a, a chore to do however I did I did want to do videos, just they're, they're probably not going to be the highest quality if this video you're watching right now it may not be the greatest video you've ever seen um, if you see this at the start of each video I just wanted to say probably skip to about maybe like two minute mark and you will have got rid of this um, I'll try and put the point at which you skip in each video if you don't want to see all this um, but yeah I'll be back um, in a few weeks and start making some new videos Hopefully I've got some new video ideas on what I'm going to do um, to try and make some new types of videos. Um, just at the moment I need a bit of a break, um, but I did make sure I had enough replays to pretty much last a few weeks. Um, I'm lucky enough to have people that are willing to send me replays and I've got, I've got loads of them. So I'm going to try and record as many as I can and I've already recorded quite a few. Um, just so then there's enough to pretty much... Um, last the next few weeks and to be honest I'll probably start recording them before the end of the few weeks but it just gives me a bit of a buffer if I don't get around to doing them so hopefully you enjoy the video that you're about to see whatever video it is um, and it will be about the three minute mark in the end for where to skip so thank you hopefully you stick around and hopefully you still enjoy my videos um, even the ones that are going on right now and also hopefully the ones um, that I do in the future Hello guys and welcome back. So today what I have for you is I have another replay that Ustin sent me. Uh, this time it's not him playing a random battle, this time it is a clan war. It's of Goin versus Suicide Leader Division and uh, well obviously I haven't featured much sort of clan wars replays recently, mainly because clan wars has been like, you know, um, non-existent because uh, Wargaming decided to like freeze the map for a few months and well finally they brought it back. And although I haven't actually played it, I've got to say I seem to quite like the map at the moment in terms of the rules. Um, tank blocking and stuff, it makes sort of having tanks, um, you know, having more tanks relevant. You know, having all the Russian mediums so that you always have a Russian medium to pretty much play. Stuff like that, it just makes, you, you know, more worth having your tier 10 tanks. Um, so that's one good point. Also, um, it seems to get a decent amount of gold again. So what are Goin doing at the start here? Well, you can see that what they've got is they're basically playing 8-line. Eight 8-line's eight a really, really good place to burn this map. Uh, it's, you know, if you want a, a fight straight up, go 8-line. Um, obviously, you have to hope the enemy team goes there. But if you're defending as well, you can hold the 8-line really nicely as well because there's not many easy ways into it. Um, so, this STRV is pretty much in position to be able to shoot anything crossing here. He can get some free shots in. I believe he's probably hiding behind the tank there. I know he's, he's using the bushes. Um, and as long as he's double bushes, he shouldn't really get spotted there. And even if he does, a lot of tanks may not be even be able to pen him. Now, also, uh, what Goen have managed to do is they've managed to get a couple of tanks up here. These are really, really nice because as these guys try to push, then they've got side shots. 
Another thing that Goin did was they sent a 907 to the middle. Um, it means that he can fight Batchat because if he bounces one shell, he's able to kill the Batchat and the Batchat, you know, can't clip him anymore. Um, and also the 57 is really helpful for getting out some quick clip damage on a Batchat. Um, so they've got a really nice presence in middle. Uh, the enemy team haven't taken it, which is even better for Goin. means that these guys can shoot into the sides of them. And also um, this Type 5, which was in position at K4, um, just in case the enemy team tried to cap, it's it's a really good resetting tool. Um, maybe he was even putting it up in the ditch so that he can stay unspotted until they push. But basically this is a really, really nice position for going to be. Also, um, the reason why I'm pausing this here is because it's, it's quite quick um, and I want to sort of explain it now while they're in position. Um, also, the Conqueror GC is extremely useful. Now, not even just to do damage, but more to stun the enemy team because he can stun like you know, all of these heavies that are here. And then, you know, they lose accuracy, they lose reload, and it means that going could all peak, they can put their shots in, and then they'll be reloaded first to peak for the second shots, and that's why the RT is really, really useful. Also, it means that if, um, if Suicide Lead Division here were going to camp, then they, they can still, you know, deal with it. They've got something to dig some stuff out. So pretty much they can just play on this corner. They've got the E3, which is coming in the fight now, which is difficult to pen frontally, plus it's got a really nice gun. So it can just drive in and kill a load of stuff. Um, but yeah, at this point, I think the game's kind of won. Now, the mouse, um, I mean, does Banter or something have an explanation for Was Santa even playing this game? Does Smiley have an explanation for the um, mouse? Maybe the mouse could have been a possibility to go to 80 line, or just to hold middle. I, I'm not, I've got to be honest, I don't know for what reason the mouse is kind of being used he could he could sort of beat spot early but this guy could peek up and spot an early push down there uh, I suppose he can already be in this position here if they go this side I, I don't know um, that is I honestly have no idea where the mouse is there um, you know what what the initial plan for the mouse was um, I mean he hasn't lost any health and he probably doesn't hasn't done that much damage but um, they haven't really needed the mouse in this fight um, you know, Suicide Elite Division probably had a bit of a disadvantage here for the reason of uh, they were playing a bit aggressively. Um, go in, you know, once they're sort of in these areas here, go in, have the advantage they have shots from there and shots from there. And also the tanks here. If they were back on this corner, then the other, you know, tanks like up here and up here are a bit more irre irrelevant. And, you know, it could have been a bit more defensive. They did have Fosh Bees as well, which is also just to shoot the cross for, you know, um, for going crossing. However, they also may have been a little... I'm not sure how many shots they got in to begin. I'm not sure really if they even did. Um, I can't really remember. But, you know, going certainly won the trades on this corner, and that's what really won the game. Um, having the trades, having the guys in this position, you know, gives these guys to have to turn their turrets to shoot this. So these guys get free peaks. And if they don't turn the turrets to shoot this, then these guys just get to farm them in the side. So they had really nice positions. Um, the T-57 up there has great shots if they push. You know, may maybe going, we're just sort of expecting to hold this corner. I have no idea whether it's defense, attack, landing, whatever. Ow, I just hit a lamp with my hand. So yeah, basically going um, had the crossfires that could stop, you know, the pushes coming and all that. Um, and yeah, um, they, they could just hold the corners better. Um, I, I really don't know whether this is a uh, defense or attack. If this was a defense, then it, it, yeah. Um, if it was an attack, well, I, I don't know. It could, it, this setup is good for anything. Um, also, the positions that they played could be a defense, attack, whatever. Um, so I'm not really sure. I suppose, to be honest, maybe in a defense you'd play with more mouse to really hold the 8 line. Um, I don't know, it could have been a defence, I, I don't think, I don't, well I don't know, someone please tell me in the description, or in the comments, not the description, the comments, and also tell me the use of this mouse, uh, like if there's a specific reason or whether it was just going that way just because it wanted to go that way, um, I'm just interested why it, why it went there to be honest, but yeah, um, this was a really nice replay, thank you very much Oostin, um, be sure to check out Oostin's stream in the description, um, you know, if you really, really, really want to watch Oostin not stream, he doesn't really seem to stream that much at the moment, if at all. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Goodbye.